if you can't win on this bike, you can't win on the best bike money can buy. I've always wanted to wheelie the whole way up. I have a video, isn't it? It'd be well funny. Like you go to the fridge and um, you pull out some beer cans because you want to demonstrate a new bike. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Have you ever seen a road bike like that? It looks fantastic, doesn't it? Look, when it comes to money, you just can't beat aluminium for the performance it offers in a road race bike. And to better it, we well, need deep pockets to step up to a carbon fiber race bike. And with that in mind, meet the brand new Specialized Alley Sprint. The Alley Sprint was first launched in 2015 and for 2022, it's had a massive makeover in the pursuit of even more performance and more speed. And they're calling it a carbon copy of the Tarmac SO7. And to find out just how it compares to the Tarmac SO7, I roped in the help of a top level racing cyclist to re put the new bike through its paces. But before that, Let's go through the details and changes, and I'll share my first ride impressions on a brand new bike with you today. So, let's dive in. So Specialized is calling this brand new bike a carbon copy of the Tarmac SL7, its flagship carbon race bike. You can see a real similarity in the tube shapes, the drop rear stays, the aero down tube, and then the full internal cable routing. And the new bike actually has the same carbon seat post and fork as the SL7. Now, this is a complex frame, and aluminium doesn't like complex shapes. Carbon does. It's much easier to make a complex shape out of plastic than it is out of metal. And the fact they managed to get a frame that looks so similar to the Tama SO7, but made from metal, is very, very impressive. And personally, I'm glad to see the US company really pushing aluminium and not leaving it to the entry level like so many bike brands do. So it's still a viable option for people who want a high performance race bike but on a lower budget than a carbon equivalent. And there are many reasons to choose aluminium over carbon fiber. Now value for money is one, there's less money tied up in the frame, so more money for wheels and components. It's hardier than carbon fiber and for a privateer racer, that ability to survive a crash is a big bonus. And these days there's an increasing environmental awareness of the carbon footprint of a carbon frame compared to aluminium, which has a smaller carbon footprint. So lots of factors that definitely go in the favor of an aluminium frame. So Specialized has used their innovative smart well technology and it's a technology that allows them to achieve results they couldn't do with conventional methods. So at this point, we should probably talk a bit more in detail about what smart weld is. And to demonstrate, we have two beer cans. Explain. <laughs> well, what we're going to do is we're going to chug them really quickly. They are empty. And, uh, <laughs> and, then, and then discuss aluminium. No, um, it's a really nice way of demonstrating the, the technology of Smart Weld, which is not about the, the material, it's actually about the welding technique. And when you, when you look at a tin can, you're always aware of the rolled edge, and the rolled edge being at the top or at the bottom, it's the same thing. And it's this rolled edge element that you've got on a can that is what's being utilized in smart world. But when you try and pinch the can, and you'll have to believe me, but you know, the forces I'm putting on that are, aren't insurmountable, it doesn't flex. And quite clearly, when you take that rolled edge off, it flexes really, really simply. And that's the beauty of smart world, because it's this rounded edge that gives us a real strong structure and a very defined place to weld. So every, every you know, aluminium frame hand weld Having that, that gully that you can just put the weld round um, and connecting the two rolled edges together means you've got a very clean, strong structure. And Specialized have really finessed and evolved the smart weld technology to achieve even bigger results when it comes to performance, aerodynamics and weight. So starting at the front, we have a brand new head tube and we now have full internal cable routing just like on a Tarmac SL7. And you can, if you want, fit the area handle button and stem to get all the cables out of sight. But then perhaps a bigger change on this bike is how the down tube and the bottom bracket are hydroformed from a single piece of aluminium. Previously, the bottom bracket and down tube were separate with a big distinctive weld just above the bottom bracket. But now they removed that and in the process removed two welds from the frame. So that reduces weight and decreases the stress in that area producing a lighter, stronger frame. And here's a fun little detail for you. 
on the entire frame, there are just 11 welds in total. And hopefully providing a smooth ride on a brand new bike is a fact there's space for up to 32 mil wide tires. So it should hopefully be as smooth and comfy as it is fast and aero. And what all those changes add up to out here on a sunny Surrey country lane, it's a bike that's shockingly fast. And while I can't verify the company claims without a wind tunnel, with me on it, it feels damn quick. Very impressive indeed. And going back to the Tarmac SO7 I reviewed last year, the differences are pretty small. I know it's not a very scientific thing to say, but a seat of the pants impressions is, this is a quick bike. In the Shimano 105 build, it's no featherweight, but the stiffness from the frame means it climbs like a mountain goat out of the corners, out of the saddle, they really just fly up the hill. And this in a super lightweight build would be a real rival for a Tarmac SR7, I reckon. And that is the top of Box Hill. Type of little cake and coffee, I think. Ali right, Briggs. Mate. You all right, mate? It's not bad, how are you? Ali, you're a very handy racer. Wear it on a Brompton, fixed <laughs> wheel, Tarmac. Does it come easy to you? No, man. Really? Yeah, you know what? It does, yeah, You make it look easy, though. You know what? Cycling's just fun, isn't it? For like, nothing seems hard. You're just out there like wanting to learn it for fun. So I just enjoy messing around on bikes and I guess it helps sometimes, eh? You've obviously been racing the Tarmac SO7 since it launched and you're now riding the LA Sprint. Can you talk to us about how it compares? Oh, mate, like, it feels so similar, you know? Like, for a bit of background, like my, my SOS Tarmac is kitted out, full super record, it's, it's blinged up as light as it can be for me. When I jump on this, it's got the slightly heavier, better, cheaper price point of chorus on it, and it still feels like a race bike. Put some wicked wheels in it. And you know, it's like, if you can't win on this bike, you can't win on the best bike money can buy. And what's great about it is, you know, like I spend most of my time racing crits. And if you're a junior or whatever, starting out racing, you're gonna be involved in some crashes, you know, sometimes. It just happens. You know, you get up, that's probably gonna be all right. Get straight back in it. No frame write-offs, no insurance nonsense. It's just a durable, race-ready bike, and I think it's brilliant for that, really. So, given you've got a Tarmac and an LA Sprint, yeah. would you choose this for racing? You know what? I'm genuinely looking forward to racing this. Um, I think for someone like me who would like to have a little bit of extra training in the midweek races that I do, I'll definitely be racing this. And this will be getting raced against some of the UK pros midweek. And you know what? Races like Tour Series and stuff, it'll always be my backup race bike. And some days I might even choose to race it. You know, it's too early to call right now, but right now it feels good. This new bike does raise a rather interesting question of whether it's really worth spending extra on a carbon race bike these days when aluminium done like this offers such a compelling ride quality. Now, race bikes aren't meant to be easy and relaxing to ride, and this bike is exciting and frenetic. But luckily, we have the same geometry as the Tarmac SO7, which means the fit for me, size 56 at 180, is perfect. And it's a geometry that over the years has proven to be exceptionally good in all situations. Climbing, descending, flat roads, crit racing, easy long rides, it just works well. Good balance, stability, poise, agile, everything you want from a race bike. Aluminium has been tarnished with a reputation of offering a harsh, stiff, and hard ride quality. But with the advances made by like the Specialized, the Cannondale, and Trek, that really isn't true anymore because this bike, while not as smooth as the Tarmac SO7, is impressively smooth. And that's despite riding the 26 mil stock tires on alloy hoops, there's space for a 32 mil wide tire. So go faster, tubeless, and a higher quality rim. And I think the ride quality of this would come very, very close to a Tarmac SO7. And it's even got me thinking about building up a frame set myself. What group sets? Wheels, tyres, stem, handlebar, 
would I choose? I think that'd be a really exciting build. So let me know what you think of that idea and whether you'd love to see it here on Just Ride Bikes by leaving a comment down below. Now, this brand new Alley Sprint is definitely a state-of-the-art cutting-edge road bike, but it builds on 41 years of development. Heck, that's as old as me. And for a bit of fun, here's a look back at a retro Alley from the late 80s. Now, it's worth remembering that back in the early 80s, when the Alley was first introduced, it was the company's flagship road race bike, well before the tarmac came along in the 2000s. And back in the early 80s, it was a steel road bike. And then by the late 80s, it really morphed into a showcase for the latest technology of the day. And this really was as good as it got in 1988. So we have, as you can probably see, steel lugs with carbon fiber tubes. Have you ever seen a road bike like that? It looks fantastic, doesn't it? And then fast forward a few years and the Alley became an aluminium bike just as it is today. And by the early 2000s, the first tarmac was introduced, the company's very first full carbon fiber monocoque frame. Despite that demotion to the second league, the company didn't stop developing aluminium and in 2013, Smart Weld was introduced and in 2015, the first Alley Sprint was introduced. So the Alley, as you can see, has come a heck of a long way. And thankfully, it's still gonna be here for the future as well. So long live the Alley. <laughs> So hopefully you enjoyed my first ride of the brand new Specialized Alley Sprint today. And thanks to Alec for his help in really putting his new bike through its paces and how it compared to Tarmac SL7. So let me know if you've got any questions on his bike by leaving a comment down below. And if you wanna see my review of the Tarmac SL7, then check this video right here. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting this button down here. But that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.